We were doing it right. We were coming alive. Yeah, caught up in a southern summer barefoot blue jean night. And welcome to the 2017 Chick-fil-A kickoff game presented on ABC by Wells Fargo. What a way to kick off the 12th season of Saturday Night Football. Number one, Alabama. Number three, Florida State on September 2. Almost too good to be true. America's newest football palace is this season's promised land. The Crimson Tide faithful and Seminole Nation both expecting to be right back here in Atlanta 128 nights from now to claim the national title. But this is a championship-like intensity here tonight. Saban, a five-time national champion. Jimbo Fisher, a championship coach himself who has modeled his FSU program after Nick Saban's Bama teams. And welcome to Atlanta. I'm in Stacey Ben Stadium here, Chris Fowler and Kirk Curb Street. What a way to kick off the season. What a gift for football fans. <laughs> I mean, it's five years in the making. It's finally here. This is really happening. Now, the coaches, Kirk, kind of view this as a risk reward, and they don't feel they're risking the chance to be back here in the playoff, even if they lose tonight. I think there's a great shot to see both these teams in the playoff eventually, providing that they compete tonight. I think playing in these big games offers these teams a, a luxury of getting the benefit of the doubt at the end of the year, providing the committee knows how to really weigh this. This is this is big. To be willing to play in a game like this, as opposed to taking that cupcake route where you maybe stay undefeated going into conference play, you got to applaud both these coaches and ADs for taking this game on. Now, Alabama is driven by the final minute fail against Clemson. They led by two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Reclaimed the lead when Jalen Hurts rambled into the end zone with two minutes to play. Then they watched their exhausted defense get worked over by Deshaun Watson. The touchdown there with one second to go. Saban has second guessed himself and Hurts told us the day after that game, Kirk, he began thinking about this night and this season. Well, he, he, Jalen Hurts is one of those quarterbacks. He's a coach's son. He's going to overwork to make sure he's ready to go. Now he's got a new system. Him. Brian Dable comes over from the New England Patriots. New offense. But let's not forget, Jalen Hurts made some great plays at times with his feet and with his arm. It's an example early in the year where he recognizes that there's a hole in the middle of the defense, takes off, picks up some big yards. That was the plus in what Jalen Hurts did. But late in the year, he started to have moments where he was impatient, still trying to rely on his feet too much and not allowing the play to develop, work through his progressions, be patient in the pocket. And that's the biggest thing that Brian Dable wanted to work with him is working through the progressions, trusting his system, and getting his feet aligned with what he's thinking as he's going through his reads. Brian Dable told me today, look for him to try to get the ball out a little bit quicker than he has maybe last year. Remember, folks, he was a true freshman last year, so he's allowed to go through some growing pains as he develops. He'll face a Knowles defense who gave up a lot of big plays, but tonight they get back Derwin James, who missed all the two games last year with a torn cartilage in his knee, one of the best players in the country. On offense, Florida State also has a quarterback who figures to make big progressions from his freshman season, DeAndre Francois. you got to love DeAndre Francois because of his toughness. I, I'm one of these guys that believes that when a quarterback is tough, and last year we saw Francois, you and I personally, I don't know how many games we call, we saw a lot of this, him getting pounded into the ground and continue to get up and make plays, showed that mental toughness. I think it permeates all through the entire roster, affects the defense and the offense. Now he's back. And seeing him on the field in the pregame, he looks stronger. His balls are crisp as far as making the throws down field. I really believe he's ready to challenge this Alabama defense. He's got some new playmakers now. He's lost some receivers in the backfield. He's got Patrick and the true freshman Akers. These guys are going to have to fill the large shoes of Dalvin Cook, who is now off into the NFL. I asked Jameis Winston before the game, what do they have to do on offense? Block somebody. Get a better <laughs> performance from the offensive line. Yeah. They struggled at times, as we pointed out last year. They take on a Bama defense that replaces a lot of studs, a lot of alpha personalities. So Saban looking to replace those guys tonight. Kirk Hughes said it well. It's a mix of crimson and garnet in here, but it feels like January, not early September, doesn't it? Maria Taylor, happy to welcome her to our Saturday Night Football team this year. She's with Jimbo Fisher. All right, Coach, I spoke with Jer Derwin James, and he said that he has a chip on his shoulder going into this one. People are counting the Knowles out. What's the mentality you observe during warm-ups of this team? Well, I mean, I think the energy wanting to play the opening game. you got great respect for your opponents, so it brings the best out of you. All right, thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you. Now out to you, Tom. Maria, thank you very much. Coach, no preseason in college football. What's your biggest question for your team entering tonight? Well, what kind of discipline you play with? How do you execute? What's your will to sustain in the game? Your effort, your toughness, and ability to overcome adversity. Those are all characteristics 
that you look for in competitors, and you never know what you got until you get it. And this is a great opportunity for him. Let's find some answers. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Chris? All right, Tom, thank you. These two programs in this decade are one and two in winning percentage. Alabama had that 26-game streak snapped in Tampa in the championship game. Jimbo Fisher trying to become the first Saban assistant to beat the ex-boss, but he is the guy most like Saban, and he has modeled his program very much like a Nick Saban program in terms of personnel, philosophy, and the fearless bravado that the Knowles bring in, no matter who they're playing, Kirk. Well, I think of all the assistant coaches, former assistant coaches at He Hill have gone up against, this will be his biggest challenge. And Jimbo Fisher, at this point, is an established, has established an identity, and a lot of these coaches he's faced before were still trying to build it back up. Right now, Florida State, they feel that they could stand in there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Alabama. And tonight, that's the beauty of playing football tonight. We're going to find out because they're going to get an opportunity for 60 minutes. Logan Tyler, the punter for the Knowles, to kick it away. And deep for Alabama. It's Trayvon Diggs, a kick returner, and Henry Ruggs III. Strap in. One of the great opening games in the history of college football about to happen in Atlanta. Boots it toward the end zone. Well, just leave it there. So Jalen Hurts comes out, Kirk. Remember the first play of his college career against USC? It couldn't be any worse. <laughs> he fumbles the football in the very first play. Trojans took over. But he made up for it throughout the season. And the very last play of the campaign, of course, was his touchdown run to put the tide ahead. I think that's a great illustration of what I really appreciated the most about him was his poise. I mean, he made mistakes as a true freshman. But a lot of times he would keep that and kind of put it behind him and step forward and make a play after making a mistake. Now he's a sophomore. He's got a new offensive coordinator, Brian Dable, who we'll talk a lot about tonight. But the kid has poise, and he will not let this Florida State defense or this atmosphere bother him at all. Damian Harris gets the start at tailback, and he gets the football. And he's got room. Harris into the secondary. In the nose territory. And finally, full set of bounds inside the 45. Well, the right side of this offensive line watched him come off and establish a seam right in here. He hits it right between the right tackle, Womack, and the big tight end. Right there, they set the edge. A missed tackle by Naughty, and the linebacker who had shot to the outside, surprised, thinking that the ball was going to go wide, and Damian Harris cuts it back underneath him, and there's nobody left. 34 yards in the opening play of the season. Sims in motion. Hurts from the pocket. Lofts it downfield for Wrigley, and it's overthrown. Tavares McFadden, the corner, was in coverage. He had him, but missed him. Frank's Chick-fil-A impact players. And Brian Dable decided to take a shot early here. He's got a lot of athletes. Bo Scarble, you see in the backfield, along with Damian Harris, who we already saw. Calvin Ridley will be matched up one-on-one. -on -one. Derek Noddy, the inside interior, has great speed. And, of course, Derwin James. They'll move him all the field and he's a great blitzer especially from that area right there and in second and ten Harris has it again Sutter set gets the edge is knocked out hard after about a five-yard gain by McFadden third down coming up you know, Florida State has great skill as far as a defense they're they're very athletic reminds you a lot of an LSU but the one thing you face Alabama is the size and the power and the willpower of an offensive line that can move you off the line of scrimmage. You have to match that power. The tie were inept on third down against Clemson. Failed in their last 12 tries. Big reason why they lost. Man to man across the board from Florida State. Hurts looks right, fires short, and the catch is made short of the first down by Ridley. So now a decision for Saban who needs about a yard. Little out cut there. Good coverage by Florida State. The thing that Charles Kelly wants to see from his defense is he wants to challenge Jalen Hurts tonight. Until he proves that he can throw, you'll see a lot of tight coverage from those defensive backs trying to disrupt the timing. 
Bo Scarborough in the game of tailback. Need about a yard and a half on fourth down. Scarborough hit behind the line, fights for first down yardage, but just McFadden was there early. He thought they'd stopped him, but he broke a tackle. Brian Burns tried to corral the big back, couldn't. Well, th this is a play designed to go to the left. But watch Bo Scarborough put his foot in the ground, bounce it all the way to the right, to the outside. That is great determination and vision. And then he tries to reach across for that first down. Scarborough is set off to the left of Hurts now. They fake it to him. Hurts takes off and will be trapped right at the line of scrimmage. Big Demarcus Christmas, the tackle got him. Boy, the two inside guys from Florida State have great quickness, and you're going to see that right here. Watch how he's able to use his quickness, and that's going to be a problem for Alabama. You see how he just uses his hands to be able to get away from the offensive lineman, Pierce Baker, and then he's able to get around him with the quick hips and come in and disrupt that timing of that run. That run. Knowles front, they think they take a backseat to no one, including the Tide. A little misdirection in traffic. Scarborough is stacked up, and not much there as McFadden and James, two DBs combined. Late in the year last year, Alabama's offense started to face defenses that did not respect their ability to throw the ball downfield. They didn't fear it, and they started to crowd the line of scrimmage. I think Florida State's coming in with that mentality that Alabama faced late. They have their safeties up tight. They're playing man-to-man. -man. They're daring Jalen Hurts in this offense to take shots down the field, and they're loading up against the run. They need nine on third down. Scarborough in motion. He's got it in the flat. Cannot escape. Dragged down at the 25 by Ehrman Lane, the converted wide receiver, and it's fourth down again. And here comes the field goal team. That is a great tackle by Ermond Lane, who was a wide receiver last year. Here he is, matched up. Watch him have to make this play. He knows he's the ball is going out there. That is a tough thing to do against a talented back to be able to come up and make a play and hold him short for the first down. Nice job, great recognition by Ramon Lane. Not bad for an ex-wide receiver. He's not going to get back. Andy Papanasis is the Tides kicker. Transfer from Ole Miss. This is from 42 yards in the early lead. Ugly looking kick slides wide right. Kicking's been a problem for the Tide throughout camp. And they missed the first one of the season. Think about the opening play of that drive. Big momentum. Alabama looked like maybe they couldn't be stopped. That's a big stop by that Florida State defense. So the Knowles take over at the 25. And Andre Francois looks to throw, loops it downfield, overthrows Auden Tate. DeAndre Francois, who has played a lot of football, even though he's only a sophomore. Last year, we saw him. We talked a lot about how he's continued to come up and show that toughness and poise. He'll need to be able to do that tonight against an Alabama defense that will come after him. And then being active and the ability to create. At some point, that pocket will collapse. One thing that can hurt a Nick Saban defense is a quarterback that can move around. Can Francois do that tonight to the tie? As you pointed out, he was hit a lot last year and sacked 34 times. Protection, a huge issue tonight for the Knowles. He's got it in this pass, and it's complete over the middle. That's Keith Gavin, who's expected to make a big contribution, a new receiver on this team. Didn't have a catch last year. Yeah, we talked so much about Francois and, and what they're going to do. Let's not forget what Alabama's lost up front. Are they going to be able to pressure Francois? Think about the last two years, the defensive linemen that they have lost. Jerry Reed. Ashawn Robinson, Jonathan Allen, Ryan Anderson, Tim Williams, Dalvin Tomlinson. It's a whole new wave of guys led by Deron Payne, the only one who's really played a lot of football. Can they get pressure on Francois? A goal line group on third down and about a foot. Francois keeps it. He's patient, and he's going to move the chains. Francois would impress Meeker, despite throwing for... 3,350 yards, never had a multi-interception game last year. Really shakes off mistakes well, doesn't it? He puts them behind him. You know, some of these athletes, no matter what sport you're playing or watching, you, you see guys make mistakes. Sometimes they, they let it affect them, and it leads to another mistake. And then there's other rare athletes, the special ones, have an ability to just forget about it and play that next play. And playing quarterback at this level, you have to have that ability if you want to be a special player. It's a backup left tackle. Josh Ball is in the game because Derek Kelly's helmet came off on that play. 
Francois is pressured from the right side, fires to a wide open man, catch is made down near the 40 yard line by George Campbell, another new member of the receiving corps. And George Campbell, highly touted, one of the best receivers coming out of high school football a few years ago. He's just been beaten up. Injuries. Jimbo Fisher telling me on the field before the game, look out for 11 tonight. He's healthy, he can fly, he can make plays. Now as a sophomore, 6'4", 207 pounds, makes a big play here early. Yeah, he's a five-star guy that Alabama offered. Sat out all of last year with that injury. Picks up 21 yards. And Swan fakes it to Patrick. Now has to dodge pressure. Cuts it back. And picks up a couple of yards, but that happened a whole lot last year. Quick pressure of Francois. You know, we talked about one of the keys, active, create. The last two plays is exactly what he did. They did get pressure on him. The previous play, he found Campbell. This time they get there, they bring the blitz with Fitzpatrick. He's able to recognize it. Instead of taking a sack or throwing it away, he's able to get a couple of yards, which is a positive play. They come after him with the blitz on first and ten. Great job of recognizing it, getting away from that trouble. There's that ability, athletic ability that Alabama's got to be aware of. Got away from one of the best athletes on the team in Fitzpatrick. On motion, this is Nooney Murray who pitches it back. And this is Gavin on the reverse. Gets a block, slips the tackle, and dives inside the 35. Just about a yard and a half short of a first down. A little trickery from Jimbo who does call the plays. I, I just love that you have a, all this hype. Two big-time programs, and both these guys offensively are trying to come out, taking some shots. We're seeing Jimbo Fisher here. He believes in his quarterback. When you believe in your quarterback, it allows you to feel willing to take some chances and attack a defense, even like Alabama's, early in this game, despite all the hype and the hoopla that's in this building right now. Option look. He'll throw out of it and through behind the receiver and incomplete intended for Murray. And now it's Fisher with a decision to make on fourth down. Yeah, ball's behind Nooney Murray. Murray gets open, actually beats his man Everett, but the ball's just thrown behind him. If he throws that out in front, watch the ball get behind him. He throws it out in front, that's an easy first down. He may have hurried that just a bit. This is out of Ricky Aguayo's normal range. This would be about a 51-yarder, so they're going to go for it. We just talked about the previous play. What should you do? Get him out on the edge, give him the ability to run and throw. It's hard to go away from that look just because it's typically pretty effective with Francois. Got to hurry again. Murray in motion. They snap it at two. Francois rolls out. Is hit and dropped for a loss. And the tie defense rises up. Sean Dion Hamilton makes the sack. The guy who was injured and missed the playoff last year is back in a prominent role for this defense. This play would have worked, but the timing here, you're going to see receiver here, but watch Gavin never turns around and looks for the football. Quarterback's working to get out here, but look right here. Receiver's not looking, so the timing between a young receiver and DeAndre Francois just not on the same page. It ends up costing Knowles potentially not only a first down, maybe even a touchdown. Second possession for the Crimson Tide. Now he's showing up over here. He's blocked that time as Hurts gets it away and Ridley's open. And he's pushed out near the 41 as the Tide convert the third and 10. And we talked that sitting in the pocket, working through your progressions. Is he going to bail out after the first sign of trouble? How about this? Look at Jalen Hurts this time. Third down and long. Sits in that pocket exactly the way he's been schooled. Puts the ball on the money for the first down. He had 21 yards. The second catch for Ridley is Harris. Barrels over the left side for about three. Well, that was a, a great example of what the coaches were hoping to see. And a great route as well from Calvin Ridley. They brought the blitz from the other side. You play man to man. And that is a mismatch. You put a guy up against Calvin Ridley of that size. Hurts. From the pocket, now takes off. Such a dangerous runner. He's got blockers downfield, and Hurts is down inside the red zone. Shades of the championship game. When you play man-to-man, -man, you still have to be aware of Jalen Hurts running. And the coaches want to see this. We keep talking about patience in the pocket, but they also don't want to take away a real strength of his, which is taking off and running with the football. And when he recognizes man-to-man -man with all the defensive backs, backs to him, he's going to take off and get yards. After a 20-yard run by the quarterback, it's Scarborough back in the game. He's got it. Hammered right at the line of scrimmage and driven back. 
tackle. Derek Hoskins, the linebacker, is one of the leaders of this defense. And the guy actually played on the 2013 championship team for the Knowles. Yeah, he's physical, 240 pounds. Linebackers tonight are going to be tested. The physicality of them will be tested right now. The style and approach that Charles Kelly has gone with up to this point is man to man and attacking with the linebackers and safeties into that running game. Nate Andrews, one of the veterans, who's also in that 13th team. He is out tonight with a hamstring injury, so they're a little bit thin in the secondary. Ridley is in motion. Hurts looks that way. Fires down inside the five-yard line. Incomplete. Couldn't get it inbounds. A.J. Westbrook defended, but did you see the arm strength that time? Well, he can throw it. He can make any throw on the field. And people talk about he needs to improve as a passer. That's not what he needs to improve on at all. That is close. That left foot came down first out of bounds. Good call by the official. Watch the left foot come down, out of bounds, then the right foot trying to get in. It's the arm pressure is high line. Yeah. Good job by Westbrook to nudge him that way. He might have come down inbounds without the hip. The improvement comes from working through the progressions, not the arm strength itself. He's got plenty of arm strength. We need 10 again on third down. The snap is rolled back. First. Had Scarborough open in the end zone, didn't see him, so he just takes off. But he is not going to outrun the entire Florida State defense. The play was messed up from the start. If he'd seen the tailback running free, he'd had a touchdown. And Bradley Bozeman never got the ball up. Now he's got a nose right across from him. Florida State mixing up their looks. This time a nose guard head up, and Bozeman just didn't get the ball up. Hurts fortunate to be able to scoop the ball up, try to make something out of it, but as you said, Chris, just too much speed on that Knowles defense. Uh, Benastas just wide right earlier from 42. This is from 36. He's pushing it wide right again. Nup sneaks it through just, and Alabama moves it 44 yards in nine plays to claim the lead late first quarter in Atlanta. Here's our beautiful. <laughs> Some of these heavyweights being tested, Cassidy. Ohio State got a stiff test on Thursday. And SC is slow to get going. 3-0, our Dr. Pepper Championship Drive game of the week here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. A couple of Falcons preseason games here. But that was kind of a soft open. This feels like the grand open in this place. Huh? No question. J.K. Scott is the punter. He can sit deep. And then bringing it out is Keith Gavin. Gavin, who in his first career touch had a huge kick return in the orange bowl against Michigan. A much shorter play that time. Got to be smart here for Francois. No mistakes keeping your own territory against his defense. Empty backfield. It's Jacques Patrick in the slot. They throw it back. And this is Gavin who's been busy early. Picks up about six on first down. I love how this Alabama defense runs to the ball. Defense alignment like Payne that time running to the ball. Trying to dislodge the football away from Gabe. Now, his first game of the year. This is where you, you, you have to think of everything as a coach. You know, you work on two-minute drill. You work on short yardage. You work on being pinned back inside your 10-yard line. You've got to cover all bases to get ready. There's, there aren't any preseason games in the college game. You said be careful, but he goes empty backfield on a first down against Alabama. Back in the eye formation, and they put in a quick handoff. Short gain there by Patrick. A powerful runner, 230-pounder, a junior. Well, I think with all the hype of Cam Akers, the true freshman, who we'll see at some point tonight. I hope we do. Yeah, but, but I think a lot of people think of where's Akers, but these coaches, they get in these big games, they're going to rely on guys that have been around, been in these big games, felt the speed of these games, felt the speed of the atmosphere, and understand it. So Cam Akers, maybe will get a look later. They might see how he responds. But right now, they're relying on a junior, Patrick. That makes a lot of sense. Prince Juan, third down, delivers from the pocket, and the catch is made in the first time, converted by Ryan Izzo, the reliable junior tight end. So the, the, timeout, work, the timeout works out here for Jimbo Fisher. It's just, hey, we, you've got to beat the safety one-on-one. -on -one. Izzo, who really is coming on as a tight end, matched up against Ronnie Harrison and Jimbo Fisher. We talk a lot about Brian Dable's NFL background. Jimbo Fisher finds matchups to his advantage as well. That time Izzo beats Harrison on a big third down. And Jimbo loves his only 19 catches last year should play a bigger role this year But does all the little things well play fake on first down Francois wants to take a deep shot downfield jump ball on tight got it at the 35 The big 6-5 receiver went up and got it over Anthony Averett Chris great point 6-5 and probably had as good a camp as anybody in Tallahassee look at this throw Waits for it, waits for it, goes up and over to make the
the catch. I love that he put a lot of height on the football to allow Tate to go up at 6'5 and go over the six foot Everett. Jameis Winston really <laughs> appreciates Francois here tonight checking this one out. So that's that's the kind of downfield big play we used to make. Patrick early penetration blew the play up and he battles back near the line of scrimmage. Isaiah Bugs, a backup defensive end, was quick to penetrate. Andre Francois right now just seems to be in a nice rhythm. Very comfortable. Even when he has traffic, even when he has defense alignment closing in on him, he is patient. He's looking downfield. His eyes are downfield into coverage. Alabama has not rattled him at this point at all. Five of seven, 84 yards so far. Gets pressure in his face and delivers over the middle. Diving catch is made again by Nooney Murray. He got clocked and is very, very slow to get up. Took it in the midsection there. Oh, he, he got Deshaun Hand came free on the outside. Alabama's trying to get him out of, out of his rhythm. They bring the blitz and it frees up Hand on the outside. The tackle ends up not getting to the outside. He came down for the blitz. Big Hand at 290 pounds closes in on Francois. And that is what we saw a lot of last year against Francois, where he would get hit after the throw and somehow would come back and play the next play. Hit by a free runner, no less. Patrick tripped up, no gain, and that was Terrell Lewis. They are rotating a lot of bodies in on defense, Kirk. We're noticing something they didn't do enough of, perhaps, against Clemson. Yeah, they have to do that to be able to try to stay fresh. They're not quite facing the same kind of a tempo and attack, but all I know is watching Jimbo Fisher, his, his ability to break down a defense. Remember, not only did he work for Nick Saban, Jeremy Pruitt on the other side worked for him yep. the year they won the national championship. So there's a lot of awareness, and he's one step ahead right now of Pruitt and Saban with the way he's kind of keeping them off balance with the mix of the run and the throw. Final 30 seconds of the quarter, and Francois zips a short throw inside the 20. It's a short game to Gavin. Averitt in coverage may be the last play of the quarter. And Francois gets hit again. What, what the answer from Jeremy Pruitt is to try to get him out of this, this timing and rhythm, he's blitzing him. It's time to bring in safety and a linebacker, Sean Dion Hamilton, right as he throws it, gets it hit again. <laughs> he's a tough guy, but he does not want to take too many more shots like that. End of the first quarter here in Atlanta. 3-0 Alabama back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Ready for the second quarter of the 2017 Chick-fil-A kickoff game presented on ABC by Wells Fargo. The first quarter that was free of turnovers and penalties begins with the Seminoles third and six. Just inside the red zone. Wasn't ready for the snap. But Francois adjusts and fires complete. Murray running free first and goal Florida State inside the five. He is sharp tonight, Francois. This is man-to-man -man and a little hesitation by Murray. Kind of stacked on top of each other and hit two, two on two. You had two Florida State receivers and two Alabama defenders. And thankfully for the quarterback, Francois, he has time to be able to sit and wait for Murray to clear away from Mika Fitzpatrick. But great, good separation, but it was really more about the protection, especially on the third down up front. Two tight ends in the game, as is Patrick. He's got him on first down, lowers the head, and slams for about a yard and a half. I think this receiving core, Kirk, which, which lost their top four pass catchers from a year ago, pretty sharp start against a good Alabama secondary. Yeah, right? Moody Murray, we knew about from last year. On tape has improved immensely to watch him. He is a different receiver than we saw a year ago. Last year, because of his size, he was more of a threat down in the red zone to go up and make a play. He's a complete receiver. And also Keith David is coming along as well, making plays. They got three receivers. You throw in the big tight end, Ryan Izzo. It's a difficult package to deal with. High formation on second and goal. Throw to the end zone. Tate goes up. Touchdown, Florida State. Right on cue to look for the red zone weapon. And he beat Mika Fitzpatrick. That's exactly right. I think this play... Is it kind of symbolizes the Florida State attitude here in this first half. They're going after, of course they're going to want to try to throw the fade, but they're going after the All-American, Micah Fitzpatrick. 
Tate at 6'5", against the, one of the best defensive backs, if not the top defensive back in the country, one-on-one -on, -one on an island. They said, well, our best is going to be your best. Ricky Aguayo ends the point after touchdown. I want to know why these guys were test for Bama, because they come in here with no fear of the Crimson Tide. Knowles, very impressive in the first 17 minutes of the game. Tyler boots it into the end zone. And let's see if the true freshman is going to bring it out. Yes, Henry Ruggs, living dangerous, gets it just to the 15. Which true freshman said would make an impact at running back tonight? Well, Najee Harris, the freshman out of Antioch, California, to the Bay Area. Number one overall recruit in the class of 2017 is behind Hertz. And his first college carry will be a short one. He had three 2,000-yard seasons in high school. Everybody in the world wanted this guy. All I can say is, can you imagine being a senior in high school last year and trying to tackle him? <laughs> he looks the part on the field, I mean, doesn't he? You know, Derrick Henry, who won the Heisman, was out there pregame. Standing next to him, 2-2 was much, much bigger than Derrick Henry. 2-30. They fake it to Ridley. Hurts tries to bounce it. A stiff arm, and he stretches within two yards of the first down. McFadden made the tackle. To Tom Bernaldi. Chris, we talked so often about the strength of that offensive line for the tide up front. They came off after the last drive, clearly gassed. Everybody with oxygen, a number of them wearing ice collars, and the coaches challenging them to try to get a lot more push up front against the Knolls. We'll see if they're able to do that on a key third down. And Tommy, not only the push, they got to deal with the safeties and the linebackers coming downhill, too. Knowles are crowding the line on this third and two. Hurts from the pocket, flips it. Ridley's got it, made the catch on his knees. That's enough to move the sticks. Well, they didn't go to him here, but Henges got behind Roe Hoskins. It would not surprise me to see Brian Dable try to create a matchup where he can get a back or a tight end man-to-man -man against these linebackers. They're not having a lot of success necessarily on the outside yet. And it could come with Ridley, but they have an advantage going against those linebackers. Hurts keeps it. Scoots around the end. Nice game out near midfield. O.J. Howard was such a weapon at tight end, Kirk. Last couple of years, Hench is maybe not that kind of pass catcher, but you think he can play a big role well, in this offense this year? Yeah, it's Forrest Hall. They've got some receiving tight ends that are pretty good. You know, the answer right now, we've seen it the first couple times on this, this drive, is this Florida State defense with the linebackers and safeties are trying to attack the line of scrimmage. The answer for Dave was fake it into the middle with the big back and then get to the outside with the quarterback and the speed of Hurts. Jalen has 43 yards rushing. That's 10 more yards than he has passing so far. And we'll play action from the pocket. Takes a downfield shot. Ridley is running free. He's got a touchdown. Tied. 53 yards. The kind of play they didn't make enough of last year. They've taken some shots early, Kirk, as you thought they might. And that's the answer. When a defense is not respecting your ability to throw downfield, and they're determined to take away the running game and put the game on the shoulders of the quarterback, at some point, you've got to make them pay for that. And leaving those corners one-on-one, -on -one, the speed of Ridley is tough to deal with, especially for a true freshman like Stanford Samuels. That is a tough assignment for anybody, but when you were very first college game, you were covering high school receivers a year ago. There goes number three, and there with no help. So Hurts, after a slow start in the passing game, strikes quickly, and the time reclaimed the lead. There was a lot going on there. There's a fake up the middle, but watch the receiver that goes in motion. Watch the defense react to Judy. They're up. Their eyes are in the backfield. They're looking at the guy in motion, leaving, they're leaving the corner all by himself as a true freshman against arguably the most elusive, one of the best route runners in college football, Calvin Ridley, and Samuels loses that matchup. Matchups few and far between over the years between Alabama and Florida State. First in 10 years, off to a great start. The Tide trailed for two minutes and 13 seconds before that 85-yard touchdown drive, which was all Jalen Hurts. Gavin, along with Derwin James, they kick it away from Derwin. They spotted him back there, and it's a touchback. Cam Akers, here goes the freshman. He has hit hard after about a nine-yard game. Welcome to college football. But this guy 
they all say he's going to have a huge career here. Well, we were just talking at the break about they've got to get a little bit of a running game going and try to balance things out. And Jimbo Fisher must be thinking the same thing. He finally gives Cam Akers, the true freshman, a chance to get out there and touch the football for the first time. And how about this first carry of his career? Welcome to college football from Ronnie Harrison. He ended the biggest hitters in the sport, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> they didn't have too many guys in high school like Ronnie. And second and one. The guys got it again. He had 100 yards. Look at the strength there, by the way, as he pulls tacklers for a first down. Well, he's a big guy for a true freshman. And remember, they're trying to replace Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook, one of the best backs that Florida State has ever had. He's here tonight cheering his guys on. But it's a he's a tough guy to have to replace. And it, there's a different feel. Patrick is taller. Longer, powerful guy, but Cam Akers' low center of gravity will remind you, his skill set will remind you a little bit more of that Dalvin Cook, Devontae Freeman type of back that Knowles have had here. 215 pounder out of Clinton, Mississippi. He's got it again. And he is cut back. It was well strung out by Fitzpatrick. One thing that coaches worry about with young backs who have just dominated the high school level is they were able to get away with things in high school with their speed. You just can't get away with in the college game, whether it's running, bouncing things to the outside and down the sidelines. It's a feel, and, and guys eventually, a guy like Cam Akers eventually will feel he wants to get his shoulder square with his power and get upfield. He did that the first couple times. That time he bounced it, tried to get wide, and again, with Alabama, there's a lot of speed, and they do a good job of keeping and containing him. Imagine the adrenaline for a true freshman in this environment against this defense. Francois looking left, throws high, and the catch is made by Murray on the far side. It's a short gain, and Fitzpatrick stopped him right there. It'll be third down. Well, that was a great break on the ball that time from Minka Fitzpatrick. Got beat earlier for a touchdown on that fade to Auden Tate. That's probably the, his greatest strength. They move him around. We keep talking about Derwin James. Watch 29, Minka Fitzpatrick bounce around and do different things. Back at safety, they're moving to star. Now they've got him with what they call money. Got him walked up right over the tight, the tight end, up at the top. Knowles three for five on third down, need five. Here comes the pressure. Hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. The whole timing of the play disrupted, and Murray wasn't turned and ready. Fourth down. The receivers were jammed there. They, they, they've stacked the receivers to the right of Francois a couple times and had some success. And that time, Nooney Murray and Auden Tate's waiting for Auden Tate to try to clear. He just kind of got stuck with the defensive back, never was able to clear. Levi Wallace locked him down and disrupted the timing. Rashawn Evans provided the pressure. He had some help there. And so the Knowles, a couple of unproductive drives after the touchdown pass. And Trayvon Diggs back to receive the punt at the 15. Tyler boots it high and another fair catch taken by Diggs at the 14 yard line. And it's Ridley in motion, but they hand it to Najee Harris, and this is the all world true freshman running back who would love to make an impact in his first college game. Short gain there. How are they going to play this year? They're going to try to be a little aggressive and take some shots and add think, to the lead before half. I think it depends on if they're able to get a first down here. I think they're they're uh, approaching trying to get this first down with the same mindset they probably had the whole first half and get this first first down. I think your energy and your attitude changes. Get a little bit more into that two minute mode. Now they put Harris split out to the right from an empty backfield. Not much urgency as they let the play clock roll down, and now Hurts rolls out and just throws it into the bench, and they've got 220 to work with. It'll be third down. Matthew Thomas provided the pressure. Well, Matthew Thomas, he kind of tipped his hand there a little bit, walking off to the outside. I thought we might see a quarterback draw up the middle. There wasn't anybody left in the middle, but talk about closing speed. Watch him off to the left. He's a big man, 6'4", 227 pounds with that kind of speed. Remember, Jalen Hurts can run, too, and Force that ball to just be thrown away. Sets up another big third down here. Jalen again just quickly takes off. Derwin James tracking him down, and the quarterback slips. So let's see if Fisher does use the timeout. Clock still running. Now he's going to probably hold on to that one timeout. 
Jalen Hurts, part, part of the reason he didn't keep working to the sidelines was he wanted to keep that clock moving. Comes into play that they had to spend two timeouts with the play clock running yep. down in the first quarter. Yep. You could certainly use a couple of them here. This ball will be punted with about a minute 10 to go. McFadden back deep, the corner trying to continue the tradition of excellent Knowles DBs who are dangerous returners. Deion Sanders, Terrell Buckley. Scott after the nine yard punt. Much, much better. Very high and deep, and a fair catch made by McFadden after a hang time of about 5.4 seconds. 53 yards. That's more like it. A minute one to work with. Francois looking downfield now throws it underneath the Izzo, and the tight end has first down yardage. I always say this that this is what Jimbo Fisher and his quarterbacks pride themselves on is the two minute drill. I mean, you, know, you see a lot of teams work the two minute drill. I don't know if you ever see a team work and compete as hard as Jimbo Fisher does against his first team defense every day in practice, especially on Thursday. Francois again over the middle again is a uncovered pulls his way down inside the 35 with 39 seconds to play well, Alabama took a chance here they brought the blitz when you bring the blitz it gets picked up look at the void there in the middle of that defense there's nobody there brought the linebacker gives Izzo an easy route and a nice recognition by Francois clock running 32 seconds Francois looks far side oh. and a flag, yes. It's going to be interference on Avery as he was trying to contain Big Auden Tate. And Everett all over Tate. Tate with that advantage. He was kind of a back shoulder fade. He was trying to work to the back, but Everett was all over top of him. It's a timing route, trying to get it to the back shoulder, but 28, that left That's hand all over Defense number Tate. 28. Spot foul, automatic first down. The Knowles now with 26 seconds and a timeout to play with here. Trying to reclaim the lead. Or prior to this drive, remember the Knowles had that 90 yard drive. After that, 11 plays, 23 yards till they started this drive. And sometimes it's funny how urgency in a two minute drill gives you a little bit of a kind of a little bit of momentum and a different attitude of an offense. You're right, though. Few offenses as well schooled in this situation as Florida State through the years mm -hmm. under Fisher. Francois again over the middle, and it is deflected and almost intercepted. Backpedaling, the ball was touched by Keith Holcomb. Uh, that is a great play by Keith Holcomb, 42. He tips the ball, and the linebacker on the other side, right there, 20. Sean Dion Hamilton almost comes up with the interception. So this time they keep coverage to the middle of the field. Great effort by both those linebackers, but Keith Holcomb makes the play. So one near interception for both defenses. 21 seconds to go. Second down. Francois is flushed. Takes off. Tripped up. Now they'll have to spend their time out with 16 seconds. Quinn and Williams made the tackle. Third down coming up. So you got safeties, high safeties back here. When you have high safeties, it makes it hard to throw the ball to the outside. You got to work more to the middle of the field. No timeouts left. Can't take a sack. Francois to the end zone and incomplete. Moody Murray very well defended by Tony Brown, whose timing was just perfect. And yet when Nick Saban and Jeremy Pruitt play those two high safeties, the only spot you can really work downfield <laughs> is the middle of the field. And no, the timing was a little early, actually. <laughs> it, it, was, it was a little early. Murray got behind him just by a step, but the ball where it was thrown forced him to come back to the defender, and the defender got there maybe a, just a step before the ball did. That's why the crowd's reacting, and they have good reason to be upset. Absolutely. Aguayo from 37 was 12 of 12 last year inside 40 yards. Very reliable, but this one's blocked. When the Tide have it, his Evans trying to make something of this. Rashawn Evans still breaking tackles. He's got speed. He's got no time on the clock, so he's got to get all the way to the house, and he is tackled at the 45-yard line. But Alabama makes a special teams play to preserve the three-point halftime lead. That was Mika Fitzpatrick coming around the edge. Knowles will get the football to start the second half. 
Alabama will walk off with a 10-7 lead. The time with Nick Saban. Chris, thank you very much. A tight first half, Nick. How do you assess how your team performed first half under a new offensive coordinator? Well, we, we, we played like the first game. We made a lot of mistakes, not pass protecting very well, very inconsistent. Uh, on offense made a lot of mistakes on defense that we got away with to be honest with you so we just need to settle down and execute better in the second half appreciate it Nick thank you very much Maria thanks Tom coach you were in extended discussion with the officials what's your concern there why well, wasn't interference <laughs> All right, you had 11 plays for 23 yards midway through that first quarter. How do you find a rhythm offensively? We do. We got a rhythm. We're moving the ball. We've stopped ourselves two or three times. We're moving. We feel very comfortable with what we're doing. All right. Thanks, Coach. He's right to complain about the interference that wasn't called. Tied a seven-yard edge at halftime and a three-point lead. End of the first half, the BMW Halftime Report right after these messages from the studios. And welcome back to the 2017 Chick-fil-A kickoff game presented on ABC by Wells Fargo. Something rare and special, a top five matchup opening weekend of the college football season. Pretty even, pretty good first half. The Knowles having a field goal block at the end of the half, or this game would be 10-10. You heard Nick Saban complaining about the protection and the coverage, but a pretty clean first half considering the caliber of competition no turnovers very few penalties when we came into this game I, I kind of expected a 24 20 kind of game and I still kind of feel that way I, and, and to sit here and try and predict what you're going to see in the second half it's really going to come down to as you know a, you know a break who's going to who's going to be able to create that break an interception a big play in the pass game downfield where you get behind man-to-man -man coverage so one thing I know we're going to see is an aggressive mindset from both these coaches. This is not going to be, oh, let's not make the mistake type of second half. I think you're going to still see Jimbo Fisher and Nick Saban saying, we are here to win this game, not just look to avoid and just play not to lose. So I, that, that part has me excited about this second half. Fisher is such an aggressive offensive mindset. We know what Saban brings on the defensive side of the ball. Knowles will get it to begin this second half. Keith Gavin and Derwin James are back. They want no part of kicking the ball to Derwin James. It's booted into the end zone, and the Knowles will take over. Francois in the first half threw it 22 times, completed 14, had the one touchdown sack just once. He was hit a bunch, though. Showed that trademark toughness. A little confusion here. Campbell coming in late. Mooney Murray was jumping up and down, asking where's the third receiver. And Campbell finally gets checked into the game up top. Cam Akers begins the second half, the true freshman at tailback, and he's got it, and he slips as he cuts. Patrick, a big physical guy, gaining just four yards and four carries. Looks like the young guy may be the feature back in the second half. Well, I think he, it felt a little bit different when he was in there. And when you're facing this kind of speed and this kind of aggression from a Bama defense, I think it obviously is going to help you if you have a guy that can get side to side and have a little bit more acceleration than maybe what Patrick has, who's more powerful with his size. For both teams, Francois makes a downfield shot, and this is Murray very, very well covered. Minka Fitzpatrick was all over him that time. Yeah, in phase perfectly. Mooney Murray had such a big game last year downfield against Michigan. He had two catches for 104 yards and a couple touchdowns. He was able to get behind coverage. So the scouting report on him is do not let him get behind you. That time Minka Fitzpatrick in perfect position. No chance. You mentioned the Knowles are struggling on third down. Got off to a good start, but they haven't been able to convert last few. They need five yards here. Nick Saban running downfield trying to get a timeout call. No. Ended up not doing it. Gavin comes in motion. They pressure Francois, knock him down, and the pass is underthrown. Heavy pressure as Tony Brown, the Texan, came from the secondary. Trying to create confusion, and they bring the blitz with Tony Brown to the outside. He's out here timing it up. He shoots here. But watch Minka. He's showing blitz. He ends up dropping. They're just trying to confuse the protection, free somebody up, and it's Tony Brown who lays the hammer to DeAndre Francois. That is what you call a free run and a running start. And the Knowles have now failed on their last six third downs. Here comes Logan Tyler. Running has been a struggle for the Seminoles. Flag and his block.
A huge play. We will check the flag. Formation, offense, more than four in the backfield. It's declined. First down. So a blocked field goal before halftime, and now this blocked punt, which sets up Bama at the six, Kirk. And Damian Harris gets in there to block it. Crucial time with the ball deep in the Florida State territory. But a, a, a starting running back out there trying to make a block and making a block for Alabama's defense. That's a starting tailback. Now, some people say, why do you put your starters on special teams? You could definitely risk injury. It happened to Hamilton covering the kickoff last year, but that's that's the answer. Yep. And Nick Saban told us this morning on game day, he looks at special teams as just as an important aspect as offense and defense like every coach does and puts his best players out there to make plays like that. What a chance to stretch the lead. Got for Ridley right here. Robin already with six catches tonight. Scarborough running hard. It's inside the five. See if the tide did they can muscle it in here without risking a throw. They're going close, Scarborough. For his size, runs with a great deal of power. They're going to go with the same formation, the exact same look. This is where, depending on how the defense plays, you have Ridley, the nearest receiver, to Jalen Hurt. And also, you can run, always run the football. He's right here. This would be a, a route out there. Would always be a potential possibility. Play clock at four. Hurts pressure. Josh Sweat off the edge. It's third and goal. Well, they have such speed, and this time it's easy to get in when you don't pick up a block. Confusion. They bring a pressure to the outside. The left tackle, Jonah Williams, has got to step out to his left because of the pressure from Sweat and Burns. Those two can get after the quarterback. Gets in and gets after the quarterback, Jalen Hurts. So two plays, loss of five yards, third and goal from outside the 10. This would be a massive stand for the Seminole defense after that block punt. Low snap. Hurts pressured again. Has room. Cuts it back, but he will be slammed to the ground by Derwin James. And here comes a field goal attempt, and what a huge performance by the group in Garden Gold. It's time they rush four. They're still able to get pressure, Chris, with just rushing four. And look right here at Derwin James. Pressure comes here. He's forced to step up in the pocket. Watch Derwin James eyeing him the whole way, spying him. He's got speed now. He can, he can run away from people. Derwin James does a good job of keeping him in his position where he can't get past him into the end zone. It's a thing of beauty, his pursuit of the quarterback. Wasn't it? Tackle. Wonderful to have him back in the game. Papanastas made from 35, missed it from 42. This is just a 25 yarder for the old Miss transfer. I think he kicked it on the laces, but it didn't matter. The ship shot knocked through. Bama stretches the lead to six, but that is a huge victory for the Florida State defense. Put in trouble by their special teams. Some big negative plays. And then James tackle here on the quarterback. Lucky to be down by just six. Big stand for the Seminoles defense. And they get the football back down 13 7 after the chip shot field goal forced. Gavin feels it, and he's in deep trouble. Didn't feel it cleanly, now lost the ball. It comes out. Alabama jumps on it at the 11. Another special teams misplay by the Seminoles. Wow, that was rough from the start, and Holcomb, maybe their best special teams player last season, comes up with it. Uh, it was, he was hesitant coming out, and it looked like Dylan Moses knocked that ball loose. Watch, the, watch him come in here, number eight. It's like he gets his hand on right at the last second, right before his knee goes down, the Good ball spot. comes out. 
but he was hesitant. The runner fumbled by the kicking team. From that replay, Kirk, it was pretty clear he wasn't down. Yeah, that ball's ball was punched out. Yeah, how about Dylan Moses getting an opportunity to make a huge play in this game? The freshman out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And Holcomb, who's a backup linebacker, he always seems to be in the right spot on special teams. Yep. Kirk, they've had six red zone plays tonight in the tide. Net negative one yard. So the play calling that we talked about, but the stout job by the Knowles defense down in there tight has been a big story tonight while they're down only six. Harris in the backfield as the Knowles crowd in this end tries to make it uncomfortable for Jalen. Harris burst free and scores! No opportunity squandered there. A powerful run right up the middle, and Bama stretches the lead. And the right side of the line collapses down here and watch the big tight end pick up a nice block right here. Kick down, pull the tight end, keep, creates the hole, and then that's just power by Damian Harris. Low center of gravity runs right through the two safeties. And up by 12 now, Alabama will go for two. Had a big play to open the game, was quiet for a while, and now finds the end zone. Blocks a punt. Damian, good point. Yeah, Damian Harris had a pretty good night. And the answer after that three and out, down tight the last time, pure Bama power football. Bama doesn't go for two very often. It's rolling, looking, retreats, and flips it to Ridley. Ridley with his seventh catch, a touchdown, and now a two-point conversion. And the lead is 14, late third quarter. Uh, that, that's, that's him at his best, his ability to improvise, rolls to the right, and kind of shows that he's going to take off. Look at the background back here. Watch how Calvin really works, doesn't give up on the play. A little scramble drill works to the inside, and eventually, Hurts finds them for the two points. So Bama with 11 points in the last 13 seconds as they cash in the first turnover of the night. Dylan Moses punching the ball loose, Holcomb recovering it, and Harris blasting in from 11 yards out, and now, a serious test for Francois in this Florida State offense. Down a couple of touchdowns suddenly. See if Gavin lets this one go. He decides to. Ooh, I don't know about that. That's a close call. <laughs> that is. 18 to Newborn. Six. See how the Knowles react to this adversity. There was self-created. Francois immediately flushed. Gets free. Nice little run. But just a two-yard gain. Will the tide pin the ears back now? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Now they know you're down 14, and it's almost like it's a, a, a fight, a boxing match where one of the boxers is taking control of the fight, and another boxer is just kind of hanging in there. And Alabama's been in this position, and they know that this is when they can put you to sleep. Let's see how Florida State can deal with that attitude, that aggressive attitude from Alabama. Francois is going to have to make some plays with his arm. Against the four-man rush for the pocket, it's intercepted. Threw it up in the air, and Levi Wallace with another takeaway. Again, setting up the tide in Seminole territory. And this is getting to be an avalanche at the moment. But Chris, he baited. Levi Wallace baited Francois into this. Watch Wallace. When you see a defensive back shoulders like this, you think it's man-to-man, -man and he's in bump. As the ball is snapped, he retreats and bails. Francois is caught off by, actually surprised by this. He's trying to throw it into a little window behind the corner in front of the safety, but the corner bailed on him, surprised him, and goes up and makes an easy interception. Good job, good coverage, but call by Jeremy Pruitt. A great technique there by 39, Levi Wallace. He's a senior who's been providing depth, but really hasn't had a prominent role in his career yet. But Coach Saban telling us he's clearly become that third corner behind Everett and Diggs on the other side. Desperation time now for that FSU defense. Play action. Hurts wanted to look downfield. 
and said he'll tuck it and he'll be chased out by Thomas right near the line of scrimmage. Scarborough just barreling head down for a gain of about five. Third down coming up. And this is where your defense begins to feel the hammer of that offensive line and these big physical backs. It's a great reminder that when you play Alabama, Nick Saban, it's 60 minutes. You, you might have a good quarter, you might have a good half, but can you stand toe to toe and, and, and go to war with them and battle with them and deal with that physicality for 60 minutes? Clemson came from two touchdowns behind against Bama to win last year. That is the challenge for the Seminoles. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station with the final quarter. Bama up by 14, beginning of the final quarter. Our Dr. Pepper Championship Grime game of the week. What a disastrous last four touches for Jimbo Fisher's team. Hit a block punt, it was a great play by Harris. Gavin fumbled the kickoff. Then a touchdown run by Harris, another interception by Wallace. Huge. Third down. Tide needs six. And Derwin James up there playing linebacker. Hurts over the middle. Ridley makes the catch. It's near the marker, but it will be a yard short. Tom? And, cr and Chris, remember the collective memory on the Alabama sideline, and it's being voiced by Micah Fitzpatrick. The last time this team had a double-digit lead entering the fourth quarter was the last game they played. We know how that turned out with one second to go. Micah Fitzpatrick exhorting the defense when they get their turn to not give it away the way it happened the last time they played. Under center is Hurts on fourth and one. Scarborough is the back. Bo's got it. He's got the first down. Difference is, you see Cable's family there, they approve of the play call, that right now, Florida State's only run 50 plays. That Bama defense should be a lot fresher than they were in the fourth quarter of the championship game. Yeah, that's very true. And a great report from Tom Rinaldi talking about Micah Fitzpatrick being the guy down there. We wondered who's going to become the leaders on this team. There's an example of it right there. Bo Scarborough is back in the game. He's running downhill through people, and the wear and tear is evident. Kind of a helpless feeling if you're a defense. You know you're going to get a steady diet of downhill running. Well, and, and you have to deal with a different type of back. They all kind of complement each other very well. Bo Scarborough is the bigger back, 235 pounds, but coaches tell us he has elite speed, but he's a different running style from Damian Harris and Najee Harris. They all bring something a little bit different to the table. Bo Scarborough brings plenty of power. Sure does. Figure to see plenty best, of that. The best back of the bunch, Josh Jacobs, isn't even dressed tonight. Not playing. He's got his Scarborough muscles for a first down. He, he is a very talented, versatile back out of Tulsa, and we'll see him a big part of the rotation this season once the hamstring heals up. Well, next Saturday, this is College Game Day built by the Home Depot, heading to Columbus to set the stage for that top 10 showdown for Oklahoma and Ohio State. Game day at 9 o'clock. We have the game in prime time here on ABC. So the first down. Approaching eight minutes to play. Smart by Jalen Hurts. Just milking that clock. Smart to hand it off to Scarborough, too. Knowles are just ripping at the football, trying to create the turnover. A big thing that Alabama prides itself on is that fourth quarter edge. And there's our man, Scott Cochran, the strength and conditioning coach. People marvel at Nick Saban and Alabama's ability to kind of kill your will in the second half and in the fourth quarter. This is the guy that really sets that tone in the offseason, winter conditioning, spring ball. He's going to take something here. What, what's what's take going a little, on? Take a little vitamin here. <laughs> Now, and he'll hold those fours up the whole the whole fourth quarter. A little energy push for the last seven and a half minutes for Scott. <laughs> he didn't need it. Scarborough, deep set, takes a hand up. That time the Knowles do a good job at clogging the middle. It'll be third down. But all kidding aside, seriously, that that 
that brutality and that m mindset that Alabama plays with in the trenches, it's it's that. It's there's it's that strength and conditioning program. They recruit, Nick Saban recruits some of the best talent out there, but it's how they develop them, how they teach them, and a big part of that is growing up in the weight room. They create the mindset there as much as they create the strength. Yeah, it's, it's in it's in Cochran's weight room. The offense will take over the trenches with rage and brutality. Right there in the wall for him every day. Every day. We need four. Harris is in the game. This hurts. Stutter steps and just heaves it out of bounds. He was chased by Derwin James and outside the pocket. So no grounding. Fourth down again. I'll tell you. What a valuable asset Derwin James will be this year for this defense. Great to see him. We've talked all night about him. How it's great to see him healthy, how they move him around. The coaches, they're not kidding either when they say he could literally play all 11 positions on the defense. Safeties, defensive back, any spot, linebacker, even defensive line. They have that much confidence in him. The adventures of Andy Papanastos continue. He is two for four. This is from 33 yards. He knocks this straight through. Don't think the tide can say the field goal situation has been solved tonight. Cochran and the tide up by 17. Michigan, after all the losses from last year, they look as strong as ever. Six sacks, three turnovers. You know, Florida scored. They scored on yeah. two pick sixes. Not they as didn't close score as on the score would indicate that, that no. ball game. No, no, no. All right, there's serious urgency now. Down 17 inside of six and a half. Francois in desperate need of a downfield play. Throws instead underneath to Gavin. Catch made after a six yard game. And Francois, they just want to keep competing. About 17, six minutes to go in this football game. There'll be no let up on Alabama's side. No. Very, very yeah, mindful not. of what happened against Clemson. Not only that, it's just their mindset. They, they, they try to compete every, every snap like it's the first snap of the game. Tate and it's broken up. That's a nice play by Levi Wallace, who had a good night pick earlier. When you watch Alabama play like this, doesn't it make you really appreciate what Clemson was able to accomplish with Deshaun Watson and the athletes with Mike Williams and Jordan Leggett? You just, you just don't see teams do that to Alabama. Maybe ever. And to do it back to back years. Watson and back to back 400 yard passing yeah, games. It's just incredible. Because this is typically how Alabama plays people, especially out of the conference. Knowles not able to attack with the same tempo. And not able to get enough possessions because of mistakes. Francois is flushed and chased, and he'll be dropped. That was Ronnie Harrison out of the secondary, and Francois is down holding his left knee and grimacing. Uh oh. Uh, Ronnie Harrison, when he tackled him, kind of rolled up onto his le the back of his legs. Blitz comes right over the left there, and there's the speed of Harrison. See at the end of that play. Yeah, you're right. He just, just sort of inadvertently rolled yeah, on the left leg underneath. there. And you talk about the risk reward of these kind of games. The loss, not so much of a risk. That wouldn't have knocked Florida State at anything, but you don't want to lose your leader in offense and your starting quarterback in the opener. You see, we will stay here. You can see Harrison going over, patting him on the shoulder pad, and he is. Minka talking to him as well. Hmm. Very little experience behind him. James Blackman, the true freshman, may, may come in at quarterback. He's a talented 6'5 guy, tall, thin player out of Bell Glade, Florida. I even asked Jimbo on the field before the game if, if you got into a situation where, where DeAndre couldn't go back out, who would you put in? And he did mention James Blackman. Uh, if, if you got into that kind of situation, he thinks he could be a guy that could really have a, have a great career. That's black when you saw J.J. Cosentino, the junior from Pennsylvania. So this is a this is a bummer. We talk about losing 
their defensive leader Derwin James in game two last year. I hope it's not as serious as it looks for Francois. Tyler collects a low snap and gets another ugly point away. It's been a rough night for the Seminole special teams. Not very good punting. Five and a half to play. Bama back on offense as Francois heads to the 10. <laughs> as the Tide go back on offense and Francois continues to be looked at by the trainers in that tent looking at that left knee. If we have any information to pass along, we will do so, of course. Damian Harris busts loose and he gets about 10. It was disorienting on the field to see that guy in the left, Chris Winky, in the Alabama stuff. The former Knowles Heisman Trophy nice winner. Trophy winner here, talking to him on the field for the game. He's kind of saying, guys, this is this is weird. He's back now coaching in college at Alabama as an offensive analyst. And Mike Loxley is the co-offensive coordinator. He actually was an analyst last year with Lane Kiffin leaving. Mike's Lo Mike Loxley now becomes a co-coordinator to go along with Brian Dable. So shake up on the staff, but it's funny to see Winky as an analyst here after his first game back in college he's coaching against or helping against his uh, his alma mater. Second and one again hurts using a lot of that play clock and Harris has a first down part of the gigantic staff that Saban has he's almost bottomless resources available to hire quality control guys and consultants it's really sort of the hidden arms race in college football and Fisher says on their side you you got to try to keep up look at look at the squadron up there. This is well beyond obviously the, the guys who are officially assistant coaches. You got Dan Werner who, who could be an offensive coordinator a lot of places. He, he's got a background in Ole Miss. I counted 15 in that other. It's that a little emptier in the Knoll side. About nine or ten. Nine. Urban Meyer at Ohio State. He's got a lot of those guys too. That's what the top programs who really have endless resources to contribute. That's the kind of brain power they bring. Scarborough. And short gain and down inside of four minutes to play in this game. You know, Jimbo Fisher is going to lament um, to see the special teams mistakes and defense did their best to keep him in this game. Francois, his injury concern is the headline for the Noles out of this one because although a loss wouldn't eliminate them, the loss of their quarterback would hugely impact their season. Absolutely, of course. I mean, that, that's. It's going to be on everybody's mind. Jimbo Fisher. He's in the tent there. In the tent with him. That's all that anybody's going to be thinking about who follows this sport. And of course, the Florida State family and friends and fans hoping that number 12 is okay. Scarborough tries to bounce it and he'll be dragged down at the line of scrimmage. Third I, down I would like to say this at 24 to 7 with three minutes to go that I, I don't. I don't know if Florida State's going to lose this game, and I know people are going to talk about should you play in a game like this. I don't know how you guys feel. I don't know how you feel, Chris, but Florida State is a good football team. They played a great team tonight. It was a close game at halftime. Obviously, they, they had a lot of turnovers as Francois, but I don't think this game hurts them. And they're going to drop in the, in the polls. But if I don't think it hurts them, they've got Miami in a couple weeks. Only for, for this big game right here. Oh yeah, of course. I'm talking about resume and just bigger picture. Louisiana Monroe is up next next Saturday, and then the conference opener at home against Miami. As Hurts is knocked down short, it'll be fourth down. He's talking about when you play Clemson, you play Louisville, you play Miami. Uh, if you keep, if you're able to keep winning games, all predicated upon, of course, his health. Prayers. Francois, as he is carted off. He got that left leg in a brace. That's not a great sign. They've got medical facilities in this stadium, as most of the state of the art stadiums do, and he may be checked out here. Your thoughts are with you, DeAndre. Kind of a fluke injury. Just chased down, got tangled up with Harrison. Scott. Punt and McFadden back pedals and gets bumped. No flag. There's James Blackman. He's the true freshman, so his uh, his college debut not what he was hoping for. Filling in for Francois, and handing off down 17 as he just run things out. That was 
the other freshman acres and now we got a scuffle and there's going to be a flag as Alec Eberle the veteran center showing his frustration. Yeah, he just took Tony Brown and was throwing. He got pushed in the back by Tony Brown which was you know kind of a, a late push by Tony Brown and Ellerby didn't like it. Tony likes to him talk just, too. Yeah, yeah. Just grab him and threw him. One on each team on sportsmanlike conduct defense number two all on sportsmanlike conduct offense number 54. His penalties off slide afterwards second down that's the first on sportsmanlike conduct on each one of those. This game has really cleanly played in the first half and very few penalties no turnovers it's been very different after halftime. You know, all you saw on the replay there was the reaction by Ellerby but as I said Tony Brown pushed him in the back after the whistle and that's why it was offsetting. And for Alabama they got Fresno State Colorado State next couple of weeks the conference opener is at Vandy. Ole Miss at home and then I, I, the key game for their season October the 7th in College Station against a &M. Certainly a huge test in the West. You think? LSU at home in November. You think that's a test? You don't think so? No. I think this was more of a test than AM. Oh, no, yeah, but I'm just saying in the, in the West, a road game at, at College Station? No. Not, that's not a test. Okay, so he, did you just put him in the, right now you no. put him in the playoffs? No, no, I, no, I think <laughs> Auburn's a <laughs> test. A lot of people are. <laughs> Auburn's a test at the end of the year, but AM's not a test. Not on the road. Auburn will be down in the plains in the Iron Bowl. The Ford wrap-up show after the game with Cassidy Hubbard. You and I can continue this conversation at the, in the 19th hole in about 30 seconds. <laughs> you know, these young acres didn't have the kind of debut we'd hoped for. Tough running, and Mac Wilson wrestles him down. Well, our thoughts are with DeAndre Francois on that left leg. And that is the headline takeaway for Florida State. And not just the loss, but the quarterback may have a knee problem. So the tide roll on and make it 37 straight regular season non-conference victories. Saban goes to 14 and one and they hope this will be the first of three visits to Atlanta. Ridley made the big play but the Alabama offense They'll, they'll feel like there's still a whole lot to work for. They, they had the short field really the entire second half, Eric, and really couldn't put the Knowles away until late. Well, the blink of an eye went from being a really close football game at 10 to 7. We started the third quarter thinking this is going to be a great second half, and literally blink of an eye, boom, 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 and Bama had pulled away and taken control of the game, and Florida State just couldn't do anything on offense. Let's get Nick Saban's reaction with Tom Rinaldi. Chris, thank you very much. No preseason. You said you wanted to find out some things about your team. What did you find out tonight, Nick? Well, I think we scrapped in the game. I don't think we played great. I think the defense did a fantastic job, especially in the second half, getting some turnovers. Special teams was a big difference in the game with the turnover, the block punt. But you know, our consistency, especially on offense, is not what it needs to be. It's great, great to get a win like this, even if you got to win it ugly. All right, we got a lot of work to do, and we know where we're at now, and we'll work to get better. All offseason, you stressed finishing. You entered last game you played with a double-digit lead into the fourth quarter. How did you finish this time? Well, we finished because they didn't score. Uh, we didn't keep the ball as well as we'd like. All right, but, you know, we'll, we'll get better. Finally, you stress special teams. You put some of your best players on special teams. How did that shape the outcome, Nick? Well, I, I think it was probably the difference in the game, in all honesty. Block punt, a block field goal before the half was a big momentum deal. A block punt, fumble on a kickoff cover. Um, and, you know, we, the field position that we kept them in in the second half was really a key to the game because they could never get in their offense. You're, you're a coach that likes to take these games on, Nick. You have throughout your career at Alabama. Why? Well, I think it tells you a lot about your team. I think our team worked hard for this game. They have a tremendous amount of respect for Florida State. I think Florida State has a great team, and I think they're going to be a team to be reckoned with, you know, this season. Um, and we got to focus on what we need to do to get better. This tells us where we are and where we need to go. Appreciate it, Nick. Good win. Thank you. Well, the Ford wrap-up show is coming up right now. So long for now from Atlanta with the Tide win at 24-7. Cassidy Hubbard.